Well, my name is Ryan. I'm with 3200 Pro, and I'm a, uh, a generalist creative with a real strong focus in performance web development and motion graphics. So uh, Sanity plays real well with that, being that it's uh, agnostic and, and works with a ton of the things that I work with. Gustavo? Yeah, so I'm Gustavo. I'm the lead software engineer and head of software engineering at Base Digital, also co-founder. And we usually work more with corporate clients. And we actually, this year, we are going to deprecate our in-house CMS in favor of Sanity. So I will be around more often in the community. And I actually met Ryan on the Slack channel of Sanity a few years ago. I think it was before the pandemic, actually, Ryan. Probably. And, yeah. yeah. Like, and, like, like, a, like a week before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we have been doing some work together. And we we end up end up becoming like good friends, right? So, and we have a ton of experience to share today. Yes, and you know, with uh, so let's just switch it over here and get this all turned on. Um, how are we looking, Gustavo? Looking all right? Yes. Well, good. Well, what we put together was uh, an app using Sanity and. Uh, a really well-designed front end by Gustavo, we thought it'd be real fun to build a real-time application for the presentation. So it, it runs 30 frames per second. It'll be available after the chat so you can download it open source and try it. With the meetup, the, uh, the frame rate is slightly slower, so it might seem a little bit less smooth than what I see. But let's hop into it and get started. Um, what you'll see is a bunch of questions starting in teal and going down into a I don't know, rose color. Um, all the ones in teal are prepared questions that Gustavo and I are ready to answer. Uh, down at the bottom are questions that haven't been asked yet by the community. So as you're listening, if you come up with a question, put it in the comments, Cap's gonna add it to the studio and we're gonna see them pop up real time. So uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that goes well. Let's uh, let's hop in here. Uh, so yeah, so first of all- uh, you don't have to wait for the end of the presentation to ask questions, so you can already do that from now. It's a very good point. Yes, this is the uh, these are the topics and the Q and A kind of all meshed together. So uh, the first topic that we wanted to go over is what we like most about Sanity, Gustavo. Yeah, so for me, well, my my background is really um, software engineering, so I, I need to talk about that, right? So. Like going from a high perspective, I think what Sanity gets really well and I really like a, a lot about is the balance between open source and software as a service, right? Because uh, if you look at it, when you are working on the studio, it, it is open source, right? We can we can actually see the source code of it. We have access, we can we can just spin up a plugin, a React component customize the way we want. But when it comes to the back end, which is a software as a service, we don't have to worry about spinning up a server. We don't have to worry about asset management. We don't have to, to worry about scalability. So that's Sanity really hit the, the nail when it comes to mixing open source and software as a service. It, it works really great. Totally agree. It also brings up a really good point uh, with the way that Gustavo and I work. He's, he starts at the bottom of the stack and works up. And I usually start with the clients and then I work down and uh, the two of us, we figure out the middle of the stack really. So uh, pretty much every answer we have will will really uh, explain that uh, well. So I put together this for um, what I like most about Sanity. I opened it in a new tab here so you can see a little clearer. Um, with Sanity, like the main reason why I came to it was I heard it was agnostic. And I've spent over a decade with legacy CMSs. And what I found throughout the years of taking on new projects and new uh, people to work with is I became less of a developer and more of a custodian of always fixing things that needed to be changed just to get back to where I was at. So uh, basically cleaning up plugins that I didn't install, cleaning up scenarios that hadn't happened yet. When I heard the Sanity created JSON data, I knew from motion graphics and game development that that meant that I could use the same data, uh, the same content as data 
throughout all the stacks I want to use in the future. So Gustavo and I, I mean, we've had projects that have started in Gatsby, and then we saw a feature that would work super well next. We moved over to that, and then SvelteKit came out. And we thought, you know, we could do this with this project, and that would work super well. And then all of a sudden, you know, like uh, an e-commerce a component needed to be put in. So we're like, let's shift over to hydrogen. And then hydrogen's like, let's become a different version of hydrogen and build it on Remix. And the cool thing about that is the content level, like the foundation of what we were working on, stayed the same all the way through, which really, really makes moving with the changing times significantly simpler. So, um, so yeah, I think that, does that sum it up, Gustavo? Yeah, that's pretty um, good. Thank you. You too. How does Sanity's unopinionated schema help in creating a more customized and maintainable web project? I can start on this one. So once again, another uh, graphic and uh, very, very similar to uh, the, the last question in that um, coming from legacy CMSs into Sanity, what I found very, very quickly is that um, is that the dependencies when you open up a legacy CMS is all assumed that the person needs everything. So let's say you have a service-based business like an HVAC company or a law firm, you'll find that like they don't need comments, they don't need users that log in that are like viewing users. Uh, sometimes they don't even need a, a media component for the entire site. So what you have is all these dependencies that have to be maintained to keep the site great. And the bloat actually becomes a lot of the items that you're trying to train the editors or the site owner to not use. And that takes a lot of conversation to explain, like, don't touch any of the stuff that you see. Just focus on this one little path here. And with Sanity, we start clean and we build the exact structured content that the site needs and it makes it super performant. It makes it super easy for clients to come in and they they become really proud really quick that they're actually maintaining their content after years of having to offload it just because they were afraid they were gonna break their site. Gustavo? Yeah, and also, uh, of course, like when you start a new project on Sanity, you can start with a boilerplate, which is usually very simple. But I, I like to start from scratch, like empty, co completely empty canvas. So I can, okay, uh, so what do we have now for this project? Let's say, what do I know that is uh, the idea is very mature? So I always start with that. So what I really like is I don't have to start with the pages or I don't have to start with the content itself, like the more visual, maybe I can start with the products because maybe the client has a better idea on how the products are gonna work. And, and over time, it, it's so easy to set up a new type or a new document, right? And, and plug everything together and get the visual interface really quick available to you that it almost invites you to, to organize it really well and make a very well engineered content, right? So I think uh, the idea that Sanity doesn't have any opinions on how you're gonna structure your content it's just great. It works really well for me, at least as a software engineer, because th that's the way I usually work with the code as well. I always start uh, empty, right? That's a, a super good point. And, uh, and also with the, the decoupled uh, studio, if you want to experiment and try adding like documents or something like that, you can do so without affecting the front end right away. So it makes for, for experimenting in a, in a much easier way. Um, let's go on to the next one here. How to handle multi-language insanity. I'm going to offload this in entirely to Gustavo because he does it all the time. He shows me things with multi-language that, that are just absolutely brilliant. So I, I'm going to sit back and, and listen here and just, uh, I'm just going to take it in. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let, let's be honest, guys. Uh, multi-language is, is very tricky. If someone said that it's easy, I mean, it's not, sorry. And uh, there are tons of way, different ways of handling multi-language. And okay, I would like to divide it into two kinds of multi-language. The first one is what we have in the studio itself, which is the content multi-language, 
right? So you can have, for instance, a document that has a language and then you have multiple documents, everyone with its own language, or you can have a document and the fields are multi-language, or you can have a mix of both, or you can have a, a root document and then like, uh, let's say children documents that each one is a language, right? So the bad news is there's no silver bullet for that. I mean, it depends on the project, depends on how you want to structure your content. And the good news is Sanity can handle all of them, right? Because it's it's so agnostic. You can, you can set up the way you like. Uh, there are a few uh, plugins for localization on from the community. And well, they, they are great. They handle multiple scenarios. But what I want to bring here today is actually, OK, but what about the front end uh, code that sometimes we need to also have some multi-language stuff uh, going on? For instance, let's say you enter a page and you say, like, welcome, Gustavo. W where do you save that welcome message? Where do you save the form success message and the error messages and all the pre uh, previous and next button, this kind of stuff, right? We need also to save that somewhere. And usually if you follow like a library like i18 next, which is quite popular, you'll end up saving in JSON files or somewhere else. And I'm gonna show you how we are doing that right now in a project I'm working on. Uh, yeah, you, you can hit the play. This, button, this is my part, I get to press the play button. There we go. So for instance, here, uh, I'm I'm getting the username and I'm using a hook that we set up. And we just say, let's say T, and then we, we set up a key for it. And we say, welcome, and interpolate with the name of the user. Quite basic, right? Let's just wait a little bit. And the cool thing is, once I hit save, it automatically populates my studio. So it's all running on, uh, as a developer tool, and I don't need to actually save in, in a JSON file or whatever. It, it just gets into the studio right away. So, and uh, we also run that on our CI CD pipeline. So it, once we push to production, it's gonna run the this code and it, it's gonna populate all the, let's say the translation keys that need to be uh, worked or need to be translated by a content editor. So that's, it, it works. So great, it's really cool to integrate this kind of stuff with, uh, with Sanity. Well put, all right. Let's see here, what do we got? Oh, this, is, <clears throat> this is more my lane here. Our, our strangest project requests and how Sanity made them effortless to develop. So uh, one, one of the best parts about working with Gustavo is calling him up and saying, uh, guess what one of my clients wants to do? It can be anything, uh, we've had, uh, a website developed completely out of PDFs because the client didn't uh, didn't really care about search engine optimization or uh, just really anything as far as standard web practices. Uh, he just wanted his uh, his office staff to make PDFs, and he wanted those PDFs to literally be the website, and uh, and we did it. And then uh, a week or two would pass, and he said, you know, uh, I'd like to send my uh, my clients uh, generated gifts or some type of an animation of a fortune cookie. And what I'd like them to have is I'd like them to get an email about the fortune of their investment. And I'd like it to say whatever I wanna to say to them and I want them to open up the email, the fortune cookie opens up and it gives them their fortune. So, you know, using uh, Cinema 4D and uh, some some pretty, pretty basic studio settings, we set up a GIF generator GIF, GIF, depends on where you're from and what you want to say. Um, you press the generate GIF, and uh, and there you are. It it puts it together. Uh, Gustavo, you got anything to say about this? No, it's just uh, I don't remember how I actually implemented the, the text on the GIF, but, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, <laughs> it's it's... it's it's pretty similar to the cards today, really. Um, the And the best part about it with Sanity is no matter how um, how different the front end is, the technology involved to do it is really, really straightforward. This particular uh, application that we're using for the presentation, it's really just one schema type that is a card document with one string, which is a question, and then some conditionals that we have for our, our presentation, and then some structured content. 
So uh, the front ends can be complex. They can be on Internet of Things or applications or or at some point we'll probably be looking at like the Vision Pro, which will be super cool to use in conjunction with Sanity. Uh, but at the same time, it's still the, the normal Sanity Studio. So that's really cool. Next topic, what is your view on Grok and GraphQL and can they be used together? Gustavo? Okay. Uh, so the thing is, because I'm bombarding a lot of colleagues on, on Sanity and they actually get a little bit confused about Gra Grok and GraphQL. And actually my first reaction when I, uh, when I was reading the documentation, uh, because I, I've been working with GraphQL for a long time, way before Sanity. And my reaction was, okay, but why did you use GraphQL from the beginning? But then once I read a little bit more of the documentation on Grok, I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense because there's no way I can do that with GraphQL. Or if I could do it, it would be super complicated. So yeah, so I like Grok and I like GraphQL, but I'm, when I'm working on the project with, uh, let's say three or four developers, I prefer to use GraphQL and I will show you why. Um, I think you can, you can open the, the bullet, please. Sure, here you go. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can play the, the first one, please. All right, here you go. So what I, what I like about GraphQL, it has a very, very complex tooling around that you can use to enhance your developer experience. So in this case here, all my GraphQL queries I, are generated uh, automatically. So if I take out, let's say, a field, um, like almost instantly, my TypeScript will, will complain that that field is not available anymore. So that's very powerful because then I can be confident that it's very unlikely that I will, I will break some production code because everything is typed and I can check on compile time, right? So on, on the CI CD, we, we run this, we deploy like a temporary GraphQL, we generate the, the, the code generation out of it, right? We get, we, we get the schema fresh from that new endpoint. We validate that everything is working correctly, and then we deploy a new version of the website. And that's when you are working on a team with a lot of people, that's very, very important because it's hard sometimes to, it's easy actually to break your code if you're not careful enough. Let's say if you're doing like the typing manually or the validation, uh, let's say using like one of those class validators. Yeah, if it's not automated, there's a high chance you're going to break it. So that's why I really like uh, to work with GraphQL. And uh, the GraphQL endpoint that Sanity provides us, it, it's very powerful already. But there are some situations where it doesn't give you what you need and you need to, to switch back to Grok. However, I mean, com like two different ways of fetching data on the same project, that's uh, it's, it's like a recipe for a mess, right? So the way I do when I have to do this kind of stuff, I think you can scroll down a little bit, Ryan. So in this example here, of course, it's just an example. It's not real code. But the idea is like I need to fetch the posts and that reference a, a, some, let's say, array of tags. And the GraphQL API itself doesn't provide that feature. So I, what I did is, OK, so let's, let's get from Grok, but I only get the IDs. And then on the next line, I, I get from GraphQL and I already have the ID, so I don't have to do anything fancy on the GraphQL side. And with this approach, I can still have, uh, I, I'm confident that I'm, it's very unlikely to break anything. And I still have my source of truth, uh, like going through GraphQL. So if you are into Grok, that's, I mean, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to try GraphQL, don't forget to actually install the tools around it because they are amazing. You can do a lot of, you can have a great developer experience. Nice, really, really well put. Um, with me, as far as a, a take on Grok or GraphQL, I, I really like how uh, Grok is bi-directional. Like you can go up dependencies or down and, uh, and it's really, really easy to read. I uh, just the second I took a look at the graph cheat sheet getting started with it, I, I realized really quickly that the, the sentence based structure of it, once you're familiar with it, um, makes it really quick 
to tell what's going on. And uh, I'm, I'm always uh, excited at, at how much you can do in so little type. So, so that works really well for me. Uh, and, and it's really easy to explain to the clients too, as far as what's going on and whatnot. All right, we've got questions. Here we go, let's see what it is. Useful third-party sanity plugins. Gustavo? Um, okay, let me think a little bit. I mean, there is a plugin that, for me at least, is is a must-have, and I, it looks already like it's part of the, the of the sanity already, which is the vision. Uh, is the one that allows you to uh, run graph queries uh, on or your in your studio. So that that one, and also you can you can also ch uh, check the perspective of it, so you can change from draft to publish and raw, and that makes uh, like it, it's a must-have in my opinion. What, what do you got? What do I have? Um, well, no, actually, <laughs> when I saw that, I just loaded something up in the other tab here. Let's see if let's see how I do at bringing this into the actual presentation. All right, that worked. Okay, this is easily my favorite. I use it all the time. It's the I believe it's called the Content Graph plugin. It's from like a hackathon, and uh, and what I like about it, all the uh, the frame rate of it is uh, a little different with the screen. Is that looking like it? Does that? Look like a whole bunch of random dots to you, Gustavo? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird. I think we well, should let's give it around. another one here. Let's see what happens when we load it up. That's a lot better. Okay, so so what I use this for is when I'm laying out schema and I'm laying out the structured content of a design, I make sure that my initial plan for the schema has structured content that's happening at the the sanity content data layer rather than on the front end. Because there's a lot of stuff you can do with like Gatsby Next, just the front end area of your site, that you can actually do a structured content, which really creates an easier way for people to work with their content. So I'll build a simple structure, and then the clients will use this moving forward. And what this is, is this is a representation of, uh, of every, almost every uh, United States veteran cemetery and all of the people that are participating to help clean them up on a day of, uh, of service. So uh, I can also look at it and say, you know, who thinks that they're attending, but they're not at an event. And they would show up way on the outskirts of it, not connected to a location or connected to a location. So it gives me a way of visually saying, yeah, what we put together works really well. This is going to go all right on the day of the event. So... That's that's mine. What do you think? Is that a last question, or should we put these ahead of it? Uh, I no. think we, we still have a few minutes. Can we open one of the community questions? Let's go with this one. What would you recommend for serializing rich text for mobile development? Uh, Thanks, I, I mean, because the way... I, I don't know if I understand the question, but... Uh, because when you use Sanity, we use portable text, and uh, I'm not sure about mobile development if it's like native. But for our React Native, for for instance, you can use portable text and just render the components the way you want. So uh, it, it works pretty much like a web. The only difference is that you can use the React Native components instead, and it works great. Uh, I'm not sure if that's. I mean, th that's what the cash question is about. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it in a slightly different and maybe not correct direction. Um, I often see this come up in the the uh, help section of Slack. Just I'm just gonna say I use uh, Tailwind and all the mobile solutions for Tailwind when I'm uh, when I'm working with uh, serialized rich text in mobile development. So I don't know if that uh, that gets to the exact point that you were getting at. But um, but that on the front end, Tailwind is my my go to for all things uh, mobile and, and desktop. So, all right. What is your favorite front end stack to work with in Sanity? We've got about a minute and a half, Gustavo. So let's see what you got. Yeah. So I'm on it. I've I've tried pretty much all of them, uh, and lately the one I'm really happy with is Remix. Um, it works great. Uh, I understand very well how it works. It's, it has some difference between Next.js and, and Remix, and particularly I prefer a Remix. But to be honest, in the end of the day, they are very similar. It's, 
it's just like a matter of taste, I think. I totally agree with you. Um, I've liked every, I've liked all the main ones for for one reason or another. Uh, Astro is is hands down my my current constant go to. I like it because I can use Remix when I need to, but but I don't have to all the time. Or I'm sorry, I can use React when I need to, but not all the time. So um, so Astro is where I, I keep going back to because I, I work the most proficiently throughout it. Um, I think we have we got a little bit more time here. How we've used structured content to enhance SEO results. This is a this is a tall order question. I'm actually going to post the answer to this in the Slack channel. Uh, basically, using uh, components in a way that are modular, so that you can create micro sections to a website that act almost as their own websites and loosely connect for. Uh, the crawlers and whatnot. So it's one large website. Um, that's the uh, the method that I use often so that uh, content editors can do way less work in the studio. But on the front end, it's um, it's changed and switched around so that the strengths of the individual offerings that a company has aren't um, uh, diluted by all the extra uh, services that they offer. Gustavo? Well, the technical side, uh, what I like is, is because, I mean, well, we, we talk about how the sanity schema is, is really like uh, unopinionated. So in the end of the day, it's, it's up to the developer, uh, for instance, if, how you want to structure like metadata for SEO. Mm -hmm. And so you can do a lot of crazy stuff there. You can have like JSON LD or can, you can have all kinds of uh, headers and, and stuff on your studio that will end up uh, filling the SEO gap. So I think, uh, I mean, Sanity won't fight you. So it, it's up to the developer to use it and make it a, a great SEO project, for instance. And that's kind of the theme that we we keep on going back to is is Sanity. And that, that pretty much includes it. You know, Sanity uh, doesn't, doesn't fight what you need to do. It starts off unopinionated and agnostic. And, and it gives you a, a clean slate that's built super, super well so you can build what you need on top of it.